Bro, go eat. I'm hungry. I'm here eating because I'm hungry. I've been working all morning. You just came here, what, 10 minutes ago? So I'm talking about what I can and can't do. I want to eat. Praise God, bro. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Another house tour. It's been a minute. I feel like being done one in, in, a, in a while. I think the last one that I was meant to do, I wasn't in the country. Still haven't shot it or made the video for it. But anyways, it's a new house. Six bedroom HMO. You guys have been seeing the updates of this property. We finally finished it. I want to show you what we've done in this property. Uh, we kind of kept it similar to what we've done in the past. You see what I mean if you have been truly, truly been watching. But before we get started, guys, hit that subscribe button, please. I know a lot of you are watching and not subscribing. Um, so hit that subscribe button for me, thank you. All right, so let's start room one. So this is room number one, guys. First room in the property. Again, gray theme going on in this property. We've got, we've kind of replicated something that we've done in the past. Like I said, if you're a true watcher of my channel, you know exactly which house I'm referring to. Um, the reason being is we feel like this scheme works very well. Like this is very neutral. There isn't any like, oh, I remember there's a blue house that we did and one of the tenants actually made us paint the feature wall gray because you like the gray instead of the blue. But anyways, room one, we've got the bay window here, we've got the desk in the corner, we've got a TV right in front of the bed. And then we've got obviously, this being a studio room, we've got a kitchen there facility on this side of the room. This time what we've included to the kitchen is to kind of have a bin storage so they can have their own bin there. In that corner, obviously, got a fridge freezer there. Pretty much everything they need is, is, is within this room. The ensuite, decent ensuite size as well, offered for each room. High ceilings. We've got the spotlights as always, because again, we want to try and keep the room as bright as possible. Um, one thing we do need to amend in these rooms, if you have seen, if you've got a good eye. The sockets have all got switches at the moment. They're meant to be dimble switches, because again, we like to kind of give the tenants the opportunity to be able to. Be in the bed, dim the lights down if it's night time, whatever. Um, I feel like that's an extra feature we need to provide them. So we'll get that sorted. Um, but anyways, room number two, let's go. Before we go into room number two, just want to quickly talk about our notice boards. So our notice board does we have that in place to have all the stuff we want the tenants to read. If they do read it, I hope they read it. Um, but there's some stuff that we want to keep on there to inform them what to do. Fire, for example, you need to know where to go, where the fire point is, who to call in an emergency. We also have this letter shelf system. So six rooms, so they'll all be here. So room one, room two, room three, up to six. And they kind of put the letters and slot them where they, where they need to be for each tenant. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Let's head into room number two. So room number two, this is the only room that we haven't got a kitchen at facility at. I made the decision to not put it in here because I felt like if we added it in here, it would have been too cramped. I felt like, got the French doors is amazing, all that stuff, but if we had to add the kitchenette, then you have a wardrobe, so have trying to squeeze a wardrobe in here somewhere with the chest of drawer, with the desk, all of that. So we decided not to in the end. So obviously with room two being so close to the kitchen, they can just easily walk to the kitchen and pretty much the kitchen is for them to use. By themselves pretty much still a decent spacious room on the fact that we didn't put a, a kitchenette in here go obviously the ensuite in here it's a replica of next door and then yeah that's in essence room number two i feel like i haven't said much all right so let's check out the kitchen uh, before we go to the kitchen obviously all our communal spaces we have sensor lights so if you're there's no movement it would, obviously the lights will go off and obviously that's helping us save on the bills because as you know bills are a crazy thing with hmos now and they want to find ways to manage it anyways another thing that we have in place is our google nest so this allows us to be able to control the temperature in the house when the heating comes on uh, the hot water as well that i leave on constant that would be annoying to kind of have a timed hot water facility so that's constantly on all the time but the heating comes on i can't remember what time slots but we've worked out as, as a, a, i don't know a time that works ideally for most people um, and it's what we kind of set across all the houses that I have. So that's another great feature that we have. There's other things you can do, uh, timer, stat, hive, whichever one's your preference, but I, I use Google Nest. All right, so now onto the kitchen slash lounge area. This is probably our smallest, I would like to say. I think this is probably our smallest, it is our smallest. Um, obviously one, 
this house being a six bedroom HMO, two, all the rooms being above 10 meters squared, um, excluding en suite. We have, we don't need to provide a large, large communal space. Um, I think the, the minimum we needed was 16 and a half. And I'll say 16 and a half, pretty much where I'm standing. This, this could have been our kitchen alone and that would have been sufficient for the whole house. Um, but obviously I like to try and provide a more large or generous space um, to the tenants. So obviously we've got our two ring hubs, four ring hubs, and then we've got the two ovens here. We've even got, still got a large fridge freezer, even though each room's pretty much got their own fridge freezer, just in case they want to put some stuff here, also they've got an option. And extra cabinet space. You can argue they don't need half of the stuff that's here, but I've done so just in case. They've got extra space available to them. Two bins, if you know, and run HMOs, tenants don't know what to, how to differentiate the waste from like recycling stuff. So we need to label that up, which clearly says recycling, and the other one's saying the waste, so they keep the two separate. What else? We've got our two washing machines, which we're yet to install the coin meters, so we'll do so before the tenants start to move in. It's very, very important. Another way we try and control the bills is we have coin meters in place so that tenants obviously have the owners in terms of when they're washing the stuff, they aren't just chucking the one top in there or whatever. They're, they're, they're using it more efficiently. And number two, they, they're actually thinking about when it is they need to come and wash, need to have some coins available to be able to wash their clothes. Um, quite like this feature. So normally we normally have like our stainless steel sinks, but I didn't actually know until I came. I was like, oh damn, this actually looks good. So shout out to Mark from Howden's, Binley, chucked in this little one in there for us. Maybe he did charge me and didn't, I didn't even know. Anyways, it looks good, so I'm all right, I'm all right with that. I know some of you are looking at this stuff and thinking, how much does everything cost? Please, please stick to the end, or you need to stick to the end, shall I say, to find out what the numbers are. I'll be sharing all the detailed numbers right at the end. So yeah, so I think that's pretty much it in this living room, lounge area. Let's head upstairs and show you what we've done in there. Before we go upstairs, obviously we've got the little sofa here, two meter sofa, we've got the little clockwork here. And then obviously we've got our standard generous landlord in the building, 52 inch screen TV for the tenants that we have to sit here. There will be a little table here as well um, for them to kind of chill here. So in this property, we haven't got a bar like we normally have with the, with, the, with the seats and stuff. So all they have pretty much is this sofa area and then obviously this TV in front of them. So now let's head upstairs. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys room number three. We've got a green theme going on in this room. If you guys have seen my videos, you kind of know the themes already, like we try and be as creative as possible with the rooms. But this is another studio room. Literally, what we've done here, I don't know if you guys saw in the previous videos, it was kind of like a box room. And if you go back to the first, first video when I bought the house, it was like a tiny, tiny room. So we pretty much expanded all of this by taking some of the bathroom that was next door and brought as part of the room. So we used part of that as the ensuite. And then we've got the kitchenette facility here. And then kind of got the room facility, the bed um, in here as well. Decent size, decent setup. Um, but yeah, let's show you room number four now. All right, so just before we go to room four, just some design features, I guess. Well, not really design features. So the, the banners that we put there, obviously painted it gray, but it's more about obviously the fact that if you have white walls and stuff, just hand prints and stuff, so it's more of a maintenance thing the actual aesthetics, but it serves both, so it's great. And in terms of the banisters, again, normally we'd have the old Victorian banisters up, but I saw this, uh, I know a property, it's like, you know what, this makes a lot of sense. Just have a water ceiling, um, whatever you want to call this, <laughs> I have a technical name for it. So, um, and then literally, I feel like it, it actually makes a lot of sense as a design aesthetic thing as well. So we're going to keep this as a theme moving forward, um, it just makes more sense. Do you guys like it? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, room number four. All right, so just before we go into room number four, guys, just realize something as well. So this area here, huge space. We obviously had to, we had no choice but to have it this way. So what we've decided to do is put a mirror here and we did have a table come in to go underneath this to kind of have like a shelf and then some flowers to kind of put on top of here. But this is what's gonna be like around this area. Anyways, now I think we've covered this hallway. Yep, room number four. All right, so room number four, another decent setup in here as well. So you're obviously on suite here. Again, got the kitchenette facility behind here. So again, just kind of tucked away from the actual main room. 
got your bed here, got a little blue theme going on in this room as well. And obviously this time around, design wise is much easier, because as you know, it's pretty much got the bed here, the TV, kind of tuck everything away. Uh, I probably feel like this is more even spacious than the previous room. Um, but again, another decent studio room, which by the way, is all been rented. I don't know if I mentioned that. So believe it or not, as we stand here today, we've got five of the six rooms already rented. I think it's room, I don't know what room it is. Room, one, of the, one of the rooms in the house is, hasn't been rented yet. This book, if you haven't read it, Millionaire Underdog, JT Fox. There's definitely gems in there. So go check that one out for real. So that's it for this room. We're gonna head to room number five. Two more rooms to go. Guys, hit that subscribe button, please. If you're watching this video and not subscribing, I don't know what you're doing. Hit that subscribe button, thanks. All right, so room number five, literally a reflection of next door. As you can see, the on the ensuite and the kitchenette were on that side of the room, just literally reflected that over. And then you have the bed here, a bit more central to the room, and then TV, wardrobe. And obviously you've got a bay window, so there's a bit more space, I would say, as well, in this room than the previous room. But come in, come in, bro. Don't, don't be shy, don't be shy. Um, but again, just decent little theme going on here. I feel like probably I like I like the bay window rooms because obviously you just the, the space alone the room would have ended by this on this wall, so having that bay window here just creates more space and obviously more sunlight coming in the room as well because you've got three big, huge windows. Um, but yeah, decent decent room. Again, already rented and I believe yeah that's already rented. I'm trying to shit now. All right, so that's room number five. Let's take you into the magical, maybe not magical loft room. All right, so room number six. Obviously these stairs were not went here originally. We had to build these stairs up. Um, as you see, we kept the theme going through as well, over here and the banisters as well, you can see. So it's the final room of the house, the biggest room of the house. Before we go in there, we were meant to put a tank, the water tank that we have in the house to kind of go around the rooms and stuff. So we've ended up using this as a storage space only. Um, so it is what it is, kind of dead space, I would say. Could have been part of that room if we had decided to kind of, I guess, put it downstairs, which we have put it um, down. Anyways, room number six. Final room in the property, biggest room in the property, best room in the property. I, I always love the loft rooms. I feel like you've got your own space up here. Um, these rooms, king size bed. Let me make sure I don't bang my head against this. We couldn't get rid of, rid of this, obviously, if you're watching, you know why. We had to keep um, as part of the dormer. So this is this bit you're seeing here. We had to keep 70 centimeters on both sides of the dormer as part of the approval requirements or conditions, should I say. But again, large room, large, generous ensuite as well for technically a couple. So this room is the room where we have two people potentially living in here, but we're likely to run it to one person. But we can have two people in here because we did apply for that as part of the planning game. So it's a six bedroom HM room, seven occupant property. Um, and yeah, in here, obviously Alpha's trying to squeeze everything and do things. There is no chair, clearly there is no little table, but just imagine it's here. That's didn't make it on time. So it is what it is. I'm just trying to wrap the project up because I'm trying to get refinance done. So yeah. This little kitchenette area, so as you can see, all set up here. They got a little bin area, they can put their stuff in the fridge freezer. And they've got a fairly, fairly large worktop. I'm trying to think, have we covered everything in this room? I think we have. Again, this is the final room of the property. So now let's go talk some numbers. Yes guys, so the numbers, I know you guys are waiting, thank you for waiting, probably the bit that everybody cares about the most probably. So I just want to start with what I bought the property for. So I actually initially agreed this property price at 245 and value came and downvalued it at 225. So I went back and said, look, I know I said I would, I would buy it at 245 regardless of what the value says, but I needed to kind of drop to 240 as a bare minimum. So I told them to kind of absorb 5k in the end and I'll, I'll absorb the rest. So agreed 240 purchase on this. On the refurb element, we spent 110,000, um, including pretty much everything you see here, the kitchens as well, the kitchenettes, 
probably near near i'll probably want to push it to 115,000, to add including the kitchens and the studios that you saw within the rooms furnishing the beds i think there's five and a half for the house to, yeah, to do all the six bedrooms and then we had little like the fridge freezers and stuff as well so i would say in total in terms of furnishing the entire house about 12 grand to kind of furnish the entire house everything you see to here bins washing machines the fridge freezers in every single room literally everything that you've seen here the microwaves all that stuff that's all kind of coming up to about 12 grand so the final final number everybody wants to know is what the hell this is house value up as this house got valued at 460 i had the value come in probably a week ago now so finally, if I didn't actually get it all staged and all ready, I kind of took a chance on this one because I'm trying to get this done and out uh, so I can refinance. So I took the risk of it. But with the, I guess for myself, I knew that they can kind of get the feel of what it was. And when he did come in, he actually appreciated, look, I know what you're about to do here. It's going to be high end finish. So I get it. Um, so he kind of took the pictures as it was um, and he's gone and done his report and he valued it at 460. So kind of happy with that number to be honest. I was actually looking for anything for between 450 and upwards. Um, so 460 is a great number. Um, I think numbers wise, we leave about 43 grand left in the deal, which this house now cash flows about 1,005 um, a month. So that's about a two year return um, on that. So it's not a bad deal, I would say. Um, I'm happy with those numbers. Not, not bad at all. Um, but yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the house tour. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button for me and also share the video with anybody who feel like might benefit from watching this video. Um, but yeah, guys, see you on the next house tour. Take care.